Hi folks, I hope everybody's doing good. Well, today in the mail, I just received and just opened up a knife that I ordered. It's pretty cool, so cool that I got to show you guys right now, um, no matter how much pain I'm in. For those that are interested, my surgery that was scheduled for tomorrow got pushed back till next Tuesday, April 6th. And that's just due to a lot of paperwork and um, the insurance companies, pretty much. Uh, they do what they want, and right now it's delayed. But I made it this far. One more week won't, uh, won't hurt it. So I'm in a lot of pain here right now, and I have my late grandmother's walker right next to me here, if you can hear that. And that's for something to hold on to so I don't fall down when I do this video. But anyway, let's get past that and let's do a quick spin around the block, shall we? There's some new things out here and some old. And a lot of dust since I haven't cleaned in over a month. Um, up top here is the Schrade Walden Electrician's Knife Vintage. Down over here would be, if I was physically able to go outside and carry a knife, would be three options I might grab. I would take my wallet. Um, over here would be a modern to carry in my right side pocket. And then a tra traditional for the left front pocket. Of course, it's the Boker um, largemouth bass um, canoe. This is new. That's a uh, Carpenter's Whittler, a split back from um, Chat and Morgan that I'll do a video on. And this is a swell center, but it's a beautiful frame that I've always wanted. And wait till you see the three blades on this. Outstanding knife. And, of course, the GEC uh, Osage Orange Barlow. Oh, man. And let's go over here. In that back corner is a couple Victorinox. Um, some of my favorite larger blades. You have a Folding Hunter, a Granddaddy Barlow, and a Leg Oil. And this is one of my favorite knives. I keep this up here because I use this a lot in the kitchen. And this is the kitchen counter. So it's easy to grab. Um... um and, you know, it's a good slicer and dicer, really. Beautiful knife. Take a look at it. The Warthog Legu. Uh, buffalo Horn, Buffalo Horn. And Marvel Wood for the Folding Hunter. And in the back there is the Canal Street uh, Bowie Fixed Blade. Up top, of course, is the Shatton Morgan Folding Clasp. Uh, with the John Henry etch, which is just a beautiful etch, beautiful knife, always stays up there. And as you can see, whoops, that didn't work out too good. As you can see, there is a lot of dust on here. But when I'm physically able, I'll be able to clean all this stuff up really nice. Um, over here is some beauties once again. And down here is a few new things and a few old things. Here is the Lion Steel Dom that I just bought uh, after I sold um, my Dom that had the desert ironwood handles. I, just, I, wa I wanted the Micarta for a user. I mean, if you wanted to pick one knife that you could only have as a, a user... This would be right near the top because it's a brute. Um, here, these come from the same two, um, or from, these two come from the same Shat and Morgan series. I think it's the series 12, where everything's in buffalo horn and mother of pearl keystones. This is a baby sunfish, and this is what they call a medium toothpick, which is uh, four and a quarter inch. So I'll be showing these um, pretty soon, too, as soon as possible. 
Another knife I like to use is the uh, Boker, um, God, I forgot, the Boker Prime Barlow. And of course, my favorite back pocket carry is this um, Christopher Johnson Sheffield Vintage Knife which is sharper than shit. <laughs> then over here is the new, well, here is the Rough Rider uh, Bird and Trout knife. But here is a new Boker I got. You may have seen this on uh, Hobie's channel. If you haven't seen it on Hobie's channel yet, I'm going to leave a link to his video for that. Um, it's an amazing knife, and I'm glad I was able to get one. And I'll give you my take on it uh, pretty soon, too. Um, as you can see, these are my two uh, humpback uh, camp knives from Boker, uh, 2019 and 2009. This is in what's called a flame chestnut wood. <coughs> Excuse me, flame chestnut wood. So... That's a pretty quick spin around the place. Let's take a look at what just came in today. We got Buffalo Bill keeping an eye on everything. What came in today? Look at this pristine box. It's Rough Rider with an eye. And this box is in really good shape. It's the RR509, a little bit of a tear here. But this is, I'm not sure what year, if um, Tobias happens to watch this, maybe he will know. Or if someone wants to do some research, um, I'm figuring it's probably 90s. But there's the box. And <clears throat> here is the knife. Where is... Take a look at that. This is called um, Imitation Tortoise Shell Acrylic. And it's a clasp, which is kind of one of my little secret loves are these big knives, these clasp, especially if it's a slip joint. You can find them a lot of times, they're lockbacks. But I think the slip joint is the better way to go. Look at them handles. And the acrylic, yeah, let's move the light up here a little closer. You can actually see the pins. The length of the pins going down. And just a beautiful kind of uh, like a tie-dye... Uh, um, mesh of colors really and you have the old Rough Rider badge tested sharp with the horseshoe and overall it's in pretty good condition go back here have a few little minor gaps nothing to worry about I had thought that maybe because there's a little bit of a gap here, there would be some blade wobble on this. But nope, got lucky. She's solid. Um, not quite perfectly centered, but it's off the liner, which is good. Because as you'll see, this big old blade, there's no, uh, there's no scratches on it. Listen to that lock up. There's no blade wobble. Tested Rough Rider Sharp, an anvil, and Rough Rider with the eye. Now I paid a little more for this than I wanted to, but I always wanted the these are called deer slayers. But I never came across the right one until I seen this tortoise shell acrylic and I knew that was me that was all me so of course I added it to the collection it was sixty dollars 
which is quite a bit because you can find these um, with different handles. You can find them for anywhere from 35 to 45. But um, I paid the 60 just to make sure it wouldn't go into an auction and me not being able to uh, obtain it. And there you'll see it's 440 razor sharp steel made in China, but it's a good one. I mean, the quality's there. And who doesn't like a big old clasp knife? Clasp knife. The action on it is superb. I don't want it to slam down because I'm not sure if there's any blade wrap. It doesn't look like it because <clears throat> there's a pretty good grind on the edge. It's the factory edge. You'll see. Now, would you carry something like this? I don't know. <clears throat> it can be done. <clears throat> I have... I have a sheath for it, well actually a sheath for this one here, which is the Winchester, because I planned on taking this camping, but um, I decided to take something else last year. But this is my um, third clasp, and we're going to lay them all out and let you guys take a look at it and see what how you like it and what you think about it and we'll measure it up once we lay them all down so you can see it's a pretty big knife let's slide this back and put this out <clears throat> So, we'll put the Rough Rider up here. I'll let you guys see what I'm doing. Put the Rough Rider there. Let's put the Winchester out. This has a pretty cool etch, too. Winchester Cartridge Series. Let's clean that blade up a little bit. We'll put that one down here. And my pride and glory is the Shatt and Morgan clasp in a brown uh, curly maple with a lot of dust on it. It's a clean nap blade. But I love the etch. And this here, I finally did see another picture of one of these, and it had stag covers. But these are very rare, very rare. It has a little issue with um, how they put the keystone in, but for how rare it is, <clears throat> that doesn't bother me. Beautiful um, stenciled etch, old, old school style. So we'll put that down here. Let's put the Rough Rider in the middle. And we'll go out taking a look at them. Let me put the ruler out so you guys can get a reference on just how big they are. Close to 10 inches opened. Let me try and get these pivot to pivot. So we got one in bone, one in acrylic, and one in wood. Here we go. So Winchester in an orange jig, or burnt orange jig. Rough Rider in a tortoise shell acrylic. And a Shat and Morgan in a brown curly maple and as you'll see these blades have a cutting edge of four inches 
and four and three eighths. Um, yeah, four and three eighths uh, length. See, this one looks like it might be a little shorter. Yeah, this is about three and a quarter on the cutting edge and four and a quarter on length. And the Winchester, which has some use, as you can see, that's not from the liner, that's from me. Um, that has a four inch cutting edge and a little over four and a quarter total length. Five and a quarter inch handle. Five and a quarter inch handle. Five and a quarter inch handle. So, my friends, until next time, take care. Peace. Bye bye.